So I believe this is where we are, section 7.3, describing reactions in aqueous solutions. So there are different types of equations that we can write to describe reactions. One of them is the molecular equation. This is what we think of as a regular equation. This is going to show the complete formulas for all the reactants and the products. Um, but its, its drawback is it doesn't give us a real clear picture of what actually is happening in the solution. And so there's an example of a molecular equation. So K2CRO4 plus BANO32 reacts to form solid BACRO4 and KNO3 aqueous. That's the molecular equation. We've learned about those. This is the other kind. Another kind is a complete ionic equation. So in this type of equation, anything that's a strong electrolyte is shown as ions. Remember, a strong electrolyte is a, a substance that dissolves completely into ions. And so if we look at, um, let's get my pointer here, potassium chromate, that dissolves, that dissociates into potassium ions and chromate ions. That's what it's actually doing in solution. And so for the complete ionic equation, we're going to show it as ions. Because here's, this is the cation, that's the guy, and here's the anion, that's the girl. And they're going to the party. And they, you know, they went, they like each other, but, you know, they don't like each other that much. They're not an exclusive couple. So they go to this party and they mingle, right? So this is showing what's happening. These two ions are mingling. And over here, barium nitrate, same situation. The barium ions and the nitrate ions are separating, and they're, they're mixing around. Then the products... Um, barium chromate is a solid. It's insoluble. It's not, it, it's not dissolved in water. When barium and chromate get together, there's chemistry, and they go off onto the back porch or wherever, and they're making out, and they're not mingling in the party anymore, right? But potassium and nitrate, there's no chemistry between them, and so they're still going to mingle, Okay. So this is showing what's actually happening, that we have potassium ions and chromate ions and barium ions and nitrate ions to start with. And then at the end, we have barium chromate solid, and we still have potassium ions and nitrate ions floating around. So when we look at this, we notice that the potassium ions and the nitrate ions were present in the solution before, and they're still present after. And we call those spectator ions. The spectator ions don't participate directly in the reaction. Okay, the barium and the chromate got together. There was a reaction there. The potassium and the nitrate were not part of that. It's like you go to a boxing match. Personally, I don't care for boxing, so I've never been to one. I don't see why anybody would want to go, but apparently a lot of people like to go see boxing matches. So if you go and watch a boxing match, do you come out with a black eye and a bloody nose? No. No. Not unless things got really out of control, right? But the guys in the ring are messed up, right? They've been hitting each other, but the spectators are unchanged. So in these reactions, the spectator ions were just watching. They're watching barium and chromate get all hot and then going off by themselves. They're like, oh, look at that. Mm, that's gross you know, or whatever. They're watching that happen, but nothing happens to them. So those are the spectator ions. So then we have a third type of, of equation called the net ionic equation. Net ionic is just the ions that are involved in a chemical reaction. It's like your net paycheck is what you get to take home. But they took out all this other withholding stuff, right? So the net, it's the bottom line. So we cross off the spectator ions, because it, did it really matter that they were at the party? No, it didn't. They didn't get changed. But the barium and the chromate were changed. They became this couple, this solid. Okay. So in the net ionic equation, we don't show the spectator ions. So concept check. Um, and this, I would never ask Chem 10 students to do this whole question here as an exam question. It's way too hard. 
but it illustrates several different things, and so I'm going to work it in class. Write the correct molecular equation, the complete ionic equation, and the net ionic equation for the reaction between cobalt 2 chloride and sodium hydroxide. So we've got a lot of things going on here. So let's do the molecular equation first. So we need to know what these reactants are. And so this is a review of chapter 5 nomenclature stuff. Cobalt 2 chloride. We see that Roman numeral, and we think this is an ionic compound. So I need to write the ions and then see how they get put together. So cobalt 2 is a uh, 2 plus ion because the 2 tells us it's 2 plus. So we have CO 2 plus. And chloride is Cl minus. We know that chloride is minus 1 from the periodic table. The noble gases group 8A are 0, and we count backwards. So chloride is in group 7A, it's minus 1. So CO2 plus and Cl minus. When we combine those, we see we've got a plus 2 and a minus 1. They're not the same. So we can do the crisscross thing, and we know CO, Cl2. Now, the question is, is that compound soluble? Well, they didn't specifically say, but we can assume that it is, or we can go look it up in the table. Usually in, in an equation like this, they're, they're giving you two solutions, and then you mix them together to see what happens. If we look this, look this up in the um, ion table, we see that chloride compounds are soluble. There are some exceptions, but cobalt isn't one of them. So this is soluble. We've got AQ. Man, one of those, oh, good grief. One of those was too straight and one was too curvy. Let's see if we can do better. So that's aqueous. The other reactant, yes, that was the sound of breaking glass in the stock room. Thank you. But they're, they're, they're peering in from the class in the other room, too. <laughs> How embarrassing. Sodium hydroxide. Sodium ion is Na+. Plus. We know it's plus 1 because it's in group 1A. Everything in group 1A is plus 1. Hydroxide is one of those polyatomic ions. We're going to use hydroxide a lot. You might want to just memorize that one. Or you might memorize it in spite of yourself, just from using it so many times. Plus 1, minus 1, we just push those two together, and we get NaOH. So that one, if we look it up in the table, we see that hydroxide compounds are generally insoluble, except sodium hydroxide is soluble. And sodium compounds are generally soluble, and there's no exceptions, so we're okay there. So this is sodium hydroxide, and that is aqueous. Then we're going to predict what the products are by swapping partners. So we're going to put sodium and chloride together, and we're going to put cobalt and hydroxide together. We're going to write them over here. I didn't leave myself much room. So I'm going to CO2 plus and OH minus. And we're going to have Na plus and Cl minus. So we have to look up cobalt hydroxide, COOH, cobalt and hydroxide. Um, the formula is going to be COOH2. We do the crisscross thing. We need two hydroxides, so we put those in parentheses. And then we look up the state of that, and we see that hydroxide compounds are generally insoluble. And there's some exceptions, but this isn't one of them. So that's going to be a solid. And then sodium chloride. Yeah, I ran out of room. I'm going to write it down here. Sodium chloride. Is sodium chloride soluble? Table salt. Does it dissolve in water? Yeah, it's really soluble. Okay, so we've got our equations, I'm sorry, our formulas for our reactants and our products, and then we need to balance this equation. On the left side of the arrow, we have one cobalt ion, and on the right side, we have one cobalt. So that's okay. On the left, we have two chlorine, chlorides, and on the right, we only have one. 
So we need to put a 2 in front of the NaCl so that we end up with two Cl's. Then on the left side we have one sodium and on the right now we have two sodiums. So we'll put a 2 in front of sodium hydroxide so that we have two sodiums on each side. Now we can balance that hydroxide as um, a unit because it didn't come apart. We have hydroxide in the reactants and hydroxide in the products. We have two hydroxides in the, on the left side and two on the right. So if we look here, we've got two uh, NaOHs, and each of them has one OH in it. So that's a total of two OHs. And then over here, we only have one of these guys, but each of them has two OHs in it. So that's balanced. So that is the molecular equation. Any questions about that? I'm going to erase these lines to give myself a little bit of room. Now, to write the net, ion, I'm sorry, the complete ionic equation, anything that has AQ as its state, we're going to write as individual ions. If it has S, G, or L, we're going to leave it intact. So CO, Cl2 is aqueous. Now we have kind of our little notes down here. We have all the formulas for the ions written down there, so we don't have to think through that again. Here we have, um, so we're going to have CO2+. Plus. And I'm going to skip writing the AQs because I'm not going to have enough room. That's a plus. And we've got two chlorides. And from sodium hydroxide comes apart into sodium and hydroxide, and there's two. So we're going to get two of each of those ions, two Na plus and two OH minus. Now, that cobalt hydroxide was a solid, and so we're just going to copy that down as is. We're not going to separate it into ions. And then we've got two sodiums, and again I ran out of room, and two chlorides. That's my complete ionic equation. <laughs> That's showing what's going on in this beaker or whatever. We've got cobalt ions floating around and chloride ions and sodium ions and hydroxide ions to start with. And after we mix that up, we've got cobalt hydroxide that's a solid, precipitates out, and we still have sodium ions and chloride ions floating around. Now to take this <coughs> to a net ionic equation, we're going to identify the spectators to see, okay, who didn't participate in the reaction we look at this and we say, well, what ions are the same on both sides? Well, chloride. There's two chlorides on this side, and there's two chlorides on that side. See that? What's the other one? Sodium. Two sodium ions there, two sodium ions there. They did not participate in the reaction. They came to the party, they watched what was going on, and they left the same way that they came in. Okay? Cobalt and hydroxide, though, probably left together. So now we're just going to copy down everything that didn't get crossed off. I'm going to put the state symbols back in here just because I have room. So cobalt hydrox, sorry, cobalt plus 2 OH aqueous. My handwriting is really not this horrible. <laughs> Something about using your finger, it just doesn't work as well. CaOH2S. That's the net ionic equation. It's super, super messy. So when you have the solution at the beginning, the cobalt and chloride, that is actually a solution. They're not together as a it's an aqueous solution, meaning they're right. floating in there, but they're right. together. So the question is, at the beginning, you've got the cobalt ions and the chloride ions, and they are in solution, and so they are floating about independently of each other. Okay. That's what the aqueous means. 
That's what aqueous means. It's dissolved in water. When an ionic compound dissolves in water, the ions separate. If you took, um, now you can have solid cobalt chloride. It, you know, we might even have some in the stockroom. It's in a jar, it's probably white, who knows. It's a solid, probably a crystalline solid. And so that's the pure cobalt chloride. But if you take that and you put it in water and you stir it, just like with table salt, it will seem to disappear. What happens is the ions separate and it mixes in with the water. So anything that says aqueous is an ionic compound that's dissolved. You're not necessarily going to be able to see it in the solution. Some of these things are colored, and so they'll color the solution, like copper sulfate is soluble and it makes the solution a very pretty aquamarine blue. Um, but other things, you, you dissolve them and it still looks like water. And then at the end, the solid, we're going to see some sort of a solid that's forming, and that's the cobalt hydroxide, but the sodium cl and chloride ions are still dissolved and they're still floating around. They were floating around to start with, they're floating around at the end, so they didn't really participate in the reaction. Any other questions?